<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. This is Thomas, and today we are looking at something that I have been wanting to do for a long, long, long time. Demo of the Siamese Mauser Type 46-66. The only reason that we are able to do this video is because I have some awesome subscribers, uh, one of whom, a dude named Eric, cooked up some 8x52 Siamese for me. Not a round that you can easily get. Uh, 8x52 millimeter rimmed. And there's some interesting things about identifying ammo for these guns that we'll have to take a close look at when we uh, go into the gun room, especially when we go to the tabletop segment, because these were originally chambered in 8x50 millimeter rimmed Siamese, which is a slight variation on the 8x50 millimeter rimmed uh, Monlicker cartridge. It's a really cool gun, kind of a hybrid of Mauser, Monlicker, and Arasaka designs. And uh, before we get too far into that, let's just go ahead and go into the gun room. The rather beautiful Siamese Type 46 came to be as a result of fears on the part of the Siamese monarchy, namely King Rama V, uh, regarding... French and British encroachment and colonization of Indochina, pretty much right around Siam, which is now Thailand. Uh, and quick side note here, we're going to be dealing with a lot of confusing topics here. Multiple countries are involved in the existence of this rifle, not the least of which being Siam, which is now called the Kingdom of Thailand, or just Thailand. And, uh, we're going to be working from three different calendars to understand the markings, name, and actual year that this rifle came into existence. So it's there's a lot of confusion, and uh, th this was one of the hardest to research items that I've ever purchased. There's not a lot of info on them, and everything on here is in uh, Thai numerals and uh, Thai characters that I just can't read. Um, this is actually going to play a lot into part when we get into looking at markings, as as has been the case so far with every Far Eastern weapon that we've taken a look at. We're going to be really digging deep in the tabletop section into markings, because none of this is stuff that uh, the average Joe American could just take a look at and know what it means. But anyway, back to the narrative. Turn of the 20th century, the Brits and the French are giving King Rama V a headache. He does not want his country to be colonized. So he reached out to Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire to take a look at uh, purchasing designs of one of their rifles to arm his country to ensure independence uh, in the face of uh, Western encroachment. So both the Steyr M95 and the Gewehr 98 are the forebears of this rifle. Steyr M95 is basically where you got the cartridge from. So he was impressed with the performance of the 8 by 50 millimeter rimmed Monlicker cartridge. Purchased the rights to use a similar design and the Type 45 ammunition was adopted in what would be the 120th year of the Shakri dynasty. Uh, I've been uh, King Rama the first established the Shakri dynasty. I have somewhere written down what year that would be on the Buddhist calendar, and I'd have to do some conversions to figure out what that would be on the Gregorian calendar. But we're working on those three calendars: the Shakri dynasty calendar, which was used up through King Rama the fifth, who is who had this rifle commissioned, and then we're going to be switching over to the Buddhist calendar when we get to why this is a Type 46-66, not just a Type 121, which is what is actually written on the gun. But anyway, that's, a lot of that's more for later. So now you've got your cartridge adopted in year 120 of the Shakri calendar. And then the following year, a design was agreed upon and purchased from the German Empire, and it would basically be a copy of the Mauser Gewehr 98. 
And in some ways, this looks like a Gewehr 98, but you're going to notice a couple of weird things right off the bat, namely the dust cover and these long finger pangs here. Uh, and this is because Siam did not have their own arsenals. They had to contract it out. There was a lot of discussion about who was going to build the rifles. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, at one point it was actually thought that they were just going to have Germany make them, but then they'd have to send them over halfway across the world. So they wound up paying Koishikawa Arsenal in Tokyo, Japan, also known as Tokyo Arsenal, to produce the rifles. So this also is going to be a nice segue into the next rifle that I plan on taking a look at on the channel, the Arasaka Type 99. It's been a while since we've looked at anything from the Far East, and uh, yeah, understanding the markings on these is definitely a a much more involved process than taking a look at a European gun, which most of which use the same calendar that we here in the U.S. do, with the exception of Russia. But <laughs> it definitely makes researching these a bear. This was by far the hardest rifle to research that I've ever done. So, really now you just, you have the Type 46 uh, adopted in year 121. Now, why do we call it a Type 46? Because King Rama the Sixth, son of King Rama V, uh, changed the, uh, the calendar that Siam would use to the Buddhist calendar. And that would now make the year in which this rifle is produced year 2446. And the ammo would therefore have been adopted in 2445. This is where confusion about the name of the rifle comes in. You will see and hear this rifle called a Type 45 pretty regularly, and that is incorrect. It is a Type 46. It was adopted the following year after the ammo was adopted. Now, when you get to why is it a Type 4666, that's because in the year 24... Uh, 2466. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep all these dates in line in my mind as I'm speaking, and it's a chore. In the year 2466, which would be 1923, the cartridge was altered to a Spitzer cartridge, which is now 8x52 Siamese. Because of this, a number of alterations are going to be made to the rifle. Most of them are not immediately visible, as they're going to be in the throat and the barrel. The only way to really tell is going to be the ramp will be shaved if it was converted to the Spitzer cartridge as, as a flatter trajectory and therefore uh, adjusting the sight does not need to be as dramatic of a curve as it previously was. And yeah, that, that pretty much sums up how this rifle came into existence and why it's called what it's called. But again, we still, it, it's just, it's not a gun that has a lot of information floating around online. And going back to this gun being manufactured in Japan, as we kind of just glanced over this, a number of alterations to the design were made uh, when this gun was being produced in Japan. For one, the Type uh, 35 Arasaka was in production at the time. So a dust cover that is the same design as the dust cover used on the Type 45 would be used on the Type 46. Let's see if I can get, there we go. Pulled it a little farther than it latches. On top of that, these long finger tangs were added, of which, again, is very reminiscent of an Arasaka. I actually have a uh, Type 99 right here, just as an example. There you go. Those finger grooves was something that was used across the board on Arasakas at the time. more about that later. So yeah, you've got a rifle that is kind of a hybrid of an Arasaka, a Monlicker, and a Gewehr 98, and it is beautiful. It is honestly, in my opinion, one of the nicest looking rifles in my entire collection. Uh, as you could see in the video, the bolt is a little bit stiff to manipulate, and some of that is probably just because of uh, troubles with manufacturing ammo for this gun nowadays when ammo for these hasn't been made in a very long time. But there are a lot of different versions of this rifle. Like I say, original Type 46s, if the numerals carved into the side of the ramp here are fully visible and there's no shaving done, then that gun is still chambered in Type 45 ammo. 
uh, the 8x50 millimeter, and if you put 8x52 in that rifle and manage to chamber it and fire off around, you're probably going to blow your rifle to smithereens. But that really gives us uh, a full breakdown of how the rifle came to be and why. So let's go into what is probably going to be a pretty lengthy tabletop segment as we've got a lot of really interesting markings to look at here. To start here, I would take a look at this ramp right here. You can see, and I'm actually going to use, a, I've got an original bayonet right here, and I believe this right here, the marking at the tip of my finger there, is a serial number. But as you can see, the numbers on this are largely missing once you get to about here and then very little visible at all past about the midway point on the site. That indicates that this was ground down as originally numerals would be fully visible the whole way along the edge of the site there. That is going to be how you identify that this rifle was converted to the second variation of the ammunition. Now, most of the markings that we're going to be actually taking a look at are going to be right here. Back here is your serial number, and uh, you'll see serial numbers uh, re-etched onto these rifles uh, in a different location. You might have to move the... Uh... Yeah, okay, so new serial number is etched on that side on this example. Uh, and this lever right here, by the way, is how you move that dust cover. It is independent. It does not move with the bolt like on, say, an Arasaka Type 38 or a Type 99, but it is a direct copy of the Japanese Navy's Type 35. So, back to these markings right here. Uh, first off, this circular symbol right here is what is called a chakram, which is the official symbol of the Chakri dynasty, which, if we hadn't noted this already, uh, the Chakri dynasty was established by King Rama I in 1782. Uh, I think I mentioned that I had that written somewhere, and I did in fact find it. So, 1782 of the Gregorian calendar is when the Chakri dynasty was first established. Now, this little series of markings right here is actually what the rifle is called, which is RS121 is uh, the exact translation of that series of markings there. RS meaning Ratanakoskin Sok. I could be really far off on the pronunciation there, but from what I understand, uh, Ratanakoskin Sok is Chakri Dynasty, and the two terms are kind of interchangeable. 121, again, is a reference to the year, 120 years of their dynasty, which would be going back into the whole dates kerfluffle that <laughs> makes understanding this rifle very confusing. Everything on here is going to be marked in Thai numerals on the site and then you know, Thai characters for uh, a couple of markings on, on, the, on the receiver here. Really interesting rifle. Bolt extraction is the same as a Gewehr 98, just open bolt, pull back bolt, Move, lever, and extract. And just so you can see what's going on, you've got dust cover open now. And then you can just push it back in. Very cool piece. Uh, yeah, I love this thing. You can see the wood grain on this is just beautiful. I don't know what type of wood this is. Uh, my mind would maybe go to something like teak or something, uh, considering the Southeast Asia area being the origination of this thing but I don't know it's just it's just a really cool piece really glad that I stumbled across this thing I love weird rifles let's go ahead and show you how to load this thing up and uh, yeah, take another five shots when loading the type 46 you need to make sure that your dust cover is open open the bolt and you do have a ramp for a uh, uh, stripper clip but we don't actually have clips for this these are rimmed cartridges we've discussed so you're gonna go just one at a time and make sure that the rims are staggered bottom rim behind top rim so that they don't lock up when you're shooting the gun well it's five shots got a nice cutout in the side for if you do 
have the clip to load in. I did find that you can almost use uh, Russian clips for this, but not quite. Safety is wing style safety. I believe this is a, this is a three positions uh, safety. So fully locked, trigger locked, fire. And here we go. We're going to take this next five. Ejection's a little weak, so that might have to do with the uh, the manner of the ammo. Getting uh, exactly correct ammo for these is near impossible. But again, uh, as far as what is and is not possible, shooting this demo at all would have been impossible if not for subscriber Eric. Thank you, sir. You are a gentleman and a scholar. Um, it's a really cool piece. Definitely one of the most unique pieces that I own uh, it's not something that you hear about very often, nor see. Definitely don't see them shot very often. So, anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. It's been Thomas with Great Northwest Weaponry, and we'll see you next time.